Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. Today's episode is all about living in poverty in a world of plenty. As we're getting closer and closer to Christmas, and one of the messages of Christmas is to give, not only to receive, but to give. So we're going to be discussing about poverty, and specifically poverty in Nigeria. With us in the studio is singer, songwriter, and one.org ambassador, Waje. Hi, Waje. Welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Why are you smiling? Why are you laughing? <laughs> You're so eloquent. I, she I, is. I try. She I try. Is. I try. It's good to have you on the it's show. It's so good to have you. And yeah. we're, you know, you. specifically talking about something very different mm -hmm. and also very dear to us. Yeah. Here's rather dear to you. So tell us a little bit about One.org and the campaign that you're working on. Okay, so One.org is an organization um, founded by Bono. And um, the, first time, the first time I heard about them was during the coconut chocolate um, um, campaign that it did for agriculture, basically getting people and informing people of how great that also adds value in, in our society as well. So um, I joined them last year for the Poverty Sexist mm -hmm. and uh, what we were trying to do was basically educate people again on how possible it is to eradicate poverty, poverty. you know, especially um, in the sub-Saharan and here as well in Nigeria mm -hmm. and um, through education and all of that. But this time we started something that is also part of the poverty campaign because I personally think that, um, yeah, people can talk about our GDP and all of that, but health is a major issue and it shows the wealth of um, whatever nation it is. Absolutely. So um, I start, we started the Make Ninja Stronger campaign, which is centered on health. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are now. It's become a it's very, awesome. very popular hashtag because initially when I saw, saw it, you know, going around, I actually thought it had to do with our economy until I actually started clicking yes. and, you know, watching. And I watched the, the video the that video. you had done yes. where you went to visit a family yeah. yes, of, of a, a man of a who Mr. Had... Udebu. Yes. Mm -hmm. He lost his wife. You know, I think she had ulcer and um, on Good Friday, mm. he took her to the hospital and um, lost her afterwards. And the question is, was it out of negligence? Because she, she had a gas mask at the time. Mm -hmm. He went home, mm -hmm. came back, and the report says that she died, if I'm getting correct, she died during ward round. During so ward round. Yes, so nobody knows if she, so she suffocated and died. Nobody knows if the, you know, the, the gas in the cylinder was... Out. Yeah, so it's crazy. I don't even want to think about it. But mm -hmm. you can, and she has four girls, four beautiful young girls. So you can imagine what that man has to go through to make sure that those girls Are don't of course they'll feel the impact of them not having a mother anymore mm -hmm. but you know and these things are the things that we say can be avoided mm -hmm. now so, be because yeah. the, because the topic of the episode is you know having having so little or poverty in in, yeah. in a world that has plenty, plenty and nigeria is a very wealthy nation yes mm -hmm. why do you think that when it comes to other things we spend a lot of money but when it comes to health care because our healthcare facilities, I'm sorry to say, there are some hospitals that are good yeah. and we're grateful They're for that. They're also extremely the, expensive. Yes, but the majority of them are extremely expensive and out of reach for most people, for the masses. Yeah. Why do you think well, that we have such terrible healthcare in Nigeria? My opinion is money hasn't been put there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, over some time ago, like a long time ago, over 15 years ago, there was a, there was a meeting with African governments and they all decided that they were going to give 14 to 16 percent or between 14 to 15 percent mm. of their revenue every year to health. Now some African countries have successfully done that but Nigeria is still at 4 percent mm. and that being you 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 manage properly where you have invested money mm. you understand so, so yeah. I think one of the reasons why is because there's no standard we don't have a proper primary health system mm -hmm. that you know that in the local government if i have malaria this is the place i'm going to go and that is in my local government doesn't mean we don't have the right equipment to treat mm -hmm. me yeah. or we don't have the right qualified people that are, are courteous and respect me as their patient yes. you know yes. we don't have a situation where you're treating you have four nurses or six nurses to 50 people because they tire out of course well. yeah you know and we have great intelligent people but for people to be employed and stay and love the job mm -hmm. there has to be some sort of dividend exactly. or some sort of motivation to do yeah. it so the conversation is a lot now i know that the campaign is focusing specifically on getting signatures but taking it off of social media and hashtags how exactly is the campaign going to actually change these issues that we have in the healthcare? well the first thing i try to tell people is we have an we have 
uh, um, a health act that people need to read mm -hmm. okay. because how do you tell how do you ask questions and how who are you going to hold accountable if you don't know what you're holding accountable for mm -hmm. so we we i'm encouraging people especially young people to go out and read the health act is online so you can go google it but outside that um one.org is collaborating with other ngos that mm -hmm. are in the rural areas you know and trying to translate the health act in different languages and explain their rights as patients mm -hmm. and also understand what we're trying to achieve and be a part of it because the, the, the angle we are coming from, or rather the, the method we're using is saying, we, yes, we probably have one or two influential people that can go and tell the government, oh, this is what we want you to do mm -hmm. because this is how, what should be done. Mm -hmm. But if we don't go from the angle of this is what the people want exactly. you to do. So you have to, you have to start the change with exactly. the masses. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are getting people to sign the petition because it doesn't make sense. Waje can't do. Waje is an artist. Exactly. There's just one human being. Yeah. But when everybody signs that petition, they see, okay, that really these people are very passionate about it and we have to do what And you've gotten 160,000 signatures on the yes. petition. Is that just of people in Lagos or around Nigeria? It's around Nigeria, but we need a lot more. A million, correct? Yes. So, so has basically has the government said we need a million to change certain things? Well, they haven't or? said that. I don't think they have said that. But it it just is just a very great way to to drive the force for them to see that okay, that a million serious. people are serious about what you're going to do with you know the health system. And the thing is, what we're asking for specifically is one percent of our consolidated revenue fund okay. to be put in the bill for 2017. Just so that we one, know just one percent so that we know that whoever you're contracting it to mm -hmm. knows that at the end of the day this money is there to make sure that this equipment or this standard or you know the difference. manpower whatever it is is going to be met so that's what okay. we're saying one percent of our crf you okay. know something I'm, I'm going to say something that may be a bit slightly impolite but instead of us paying certain um Senators okay. and people, <laughs> yes, allowances. yes, well, people, yes, large allowances. Yes. Perhaps we should take that one percent, yes. like you said, but the thing and is, put it to better use. Nigerians have to understand that you know, I, I, I wouldn't blame anybody. I used to be like that. There was a time when, in my own life, when you are talking about even news, I, 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 not, I don't know, listen to no, the but Wajay, you're not, you're not being paid. <laughs> A hundred and something million for your yeah. for your food or for your car. I agree. Alarm. We'll continue. We're going to continue okay, the okay, conversation cool. no because we're not necessarily talking about people's allowances. Yeah. We're focusing on <laughs> poverty in a world of plenty. The conversation with Wajay continues. Children between the ages of one to five, if not if malnourished, mm -hmm. eventually deform one way or the other. Oh, really? Welcome back to Moments in Nigeria. Today on the show, we're talking about living in a world of plenty, even though there is a lot of poverty around us. And in the studio with us is Wajay, who's an ambassador for One.org. Now, Wajay, you know, it's interesting because when you guys were coming, you had sent us some statistics. And one that really shocked me, and I think also jarred me, is the fact that every single day, 2,000 children die yes. who are under five years old to disease. Yes. And I'm assuming the number is probably even slightly higher than yeah. that. You know, in a situation where we're surrounded by so much poverty, but tied to that poverty is also lack of education. How so can this campaign actually kind of educate people who necessarily might not understand exactly what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, down to little things like when your child is playing, don't allow her to run around and pick things up from the floor. You know, make sure that you wash your spoon afterwards. Make sure you wash your hand playing after. Just dirty little things water, like that. How can we sensitize that. people on this? Outside social media and, you know, like right here, that's what we're trying to do. But outside that, like I said before, we're partnering with different organizations and different people. But for me, the, the, I feel the most effective will be to... Um, find a way intelligently or rather innovatively drive the narrative to people to taking it personal and understanding it's, it's about them you know it's not about an organization that comes and says oh this is, this is what i think is wrong with you guys this is what i think you guys should do mm. let me give you an example i worked with an organization on malnutrition and i didn't even realize that children between the ages of one to five if not if malnourished mm -hmm. eventually 
deform one way or the other. Oh, really? It may not be physical, but it, it could be mental. It, it, it could be mental. Yeah, yeah. And I don't see why you would do that to any child. So that means you're taking away the, the you know, the ability of, or your child to be intelligent, self-reliant, and all of that. Exactly. So that's that's what if if me noticing that. I have two nurses that live with me. Mm -hmm. So in my house, it's impossible for you not to at least find a fruit in my mm -hmm. fridge. Because it's important to me that those girls, sometimes I wake up, they are my nurses, I cut up apple for them, put mm -hmm. it in there, I say, be eating. Mm -hmm. So that una go, una brain go de sharp as soon as they grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does that do? If I make sure that their foundation is solid, mm -hmm. I spend less money. Yeah, yeah. You know? So it is up to us to really make this work. So I feel the most effective way is you driving the conversation by telling somebody else, this is what we have to do. You know what, I'm mm. gonna, I'm gonna be play a little bit of devil's advocate because that's what I do, I tend to do on this it's show. Okay. But in that situation that you've explained, it's, it's similar to our situation if Bolanle and I had children, but for the person that doesn't earn more than, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, I was even 20. trying to be nice by saying, mm. okay, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, they have a lot of children and they can't give their children three square meals a day. What would you suggest that they do? Because, okay, mama can only afford to give her child one and a half square meals a day and she happens to have five children. Hmm. What does a woman like that do in that to, situation to ensure I, that I, her child is going to be properly I love, fed? I really wish I had the answer to that question. Hmm. But here's the thing, my my what comes to me is is not even about the number of square meals you eat. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, that's why education is key. A lot of people think that walking into a, a, a shopping mart that has great stuff on the shelf makes you, and it's expensive, oh mm. my God, have you had, the, is, mm. is it healthy? The truth is organic food is even cheaper. And we live in Nigeria, we have great soil. I, when I was growing up, mm. my mother had a farm in every place we lived. I know how to fry gari from scratch. Mm -hmm. I know how to make all these things because my mom made us do it. Why? Because we couldn't afford to go to a nice mart. Mm -hmm. So the thing about it is not necessarily about is what do you have in your hand? Making do what are you going to do with it so you can survive, but at the same time make the most of your survival. So education is obviously think, important. Yeah. Like Bolani said, we educate people on exactly. the fact that even though you have a little, Make what do are you with doing the with little that you have yeah. and ensure that your children are well. Yes. And, I, well and I think nourished. also with education, it's interesting because, you know, you're considering the fact that there's one meal a day. Mm. It's also like you said, what is that meal that you're eating? You yeah, know? very true. From, you know, people who are of lower income all the way to upper class, the way we cook and the health, this lifestyles we eat in Nigeria, it's just generally not yes. good. The rice Cholesterol, is this big and there's four pieces of meat. Yes. You know, even if you can't afford four pieces, there's always protein in it, but then it's fried protein. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also about creating a new narrative yeah. definitely right. absolutely. definitely absolutely Roger, can you just can you just tell us a little bit about why you decided to get involved with one dot org because because in my mind i'm thinking is it because you're a mother that you decided okay i'm going to even though i'm working with them it has to be this angle that helps yeah. children specifically yeah. well i i think why i decided no no not i think i know mm. that why i decided was because you know i'm a musician yes but i don't think that should just be my essence I think my essence should also be, if I if you put into consideration people that I consider my mentors dead and alive, like the Miriam Makebas mm -hmm. and the rest of them, mm -hmm. Miriam Babangida, I was a fan of that woman when I was a kid because mm -hmm. of Better Life for Rural Women. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the sort of woman I want to be. So it's not just, it's great to see Wajay the vocal, yeah. Powerhouse. We don't want to say it, but we know she's a powerhouse. You know, that's great, but I also want someone to say, oh, wow, I, I love YJ because when she spoke about this, I saw the change in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that's really what I'm passionate that's fantastic. about. Fantastic. Yeah, it's very commendable amazing. that yeah, you decided yeah. to. Yeah. If so anyone is interested that. in getting involved with the campaign, how can they yes, do so? Yes, it's you go to www.one.org slash make Niger stronger. Okay. and sign the petition and we'll get you newsletters we'll send you newsletters and basically let you know what is going because it's your signature that will carry and go and say here here this is let's what make your a change in the country this is what your people are saying make sure i really i really hope that Amazing. the healthcare system is improved in, in nigeria I, I strongly I believe it will be it will be i, I know the difference that it made for me just living in the uk and having certain things available yeah there yes it really does make a difference cuba for example really as, as, as Poor as people think Cuba is, they have, they have one of the strongest healthcare system. primary health systems. Well, system. that's something for us Nigerians exactly. to be inspired by Cubans and their healthcare, healthcare facilities. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. It's been All great right. having you on.
Coming up next, we'll be speaking to our next guest. The topic is still poverty in a world of plenty. The founding of one.org was around the movement for debt cancellation several years ago. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Our second guest is Nachilala Nkombo, and she's the executive director of One.org. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Where are you from? I'm from Zambia, okay. but I'm based in Johannesburg, South Africa, but I do a lot of work in Nigeria and other parts of West Africa. Africa. Okay. Yeah, that's fantastic. All right. So let's talk about the One.org campaign. And, you know, Waje has been here earlier, and she told us a lot about it, but I think for me, I was very, very surprised when I found out that One.org is actually an initiative of Bono. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, we hear about a lot of international celebrities who come to Africa to save us. But I think I want you to, to dispel the notion, that notion that, you know, One.org is about that and the fact that you guys are actually here to find ways to eradicate poverty. Okay, so um, just it's kind of a little bit of a background, yeah. right? The founding of One.org was around the movement for debt cancellation several years ago. Mm -hmm. And a number of activists at the time approached Bono to say, look, Poor African countries are paying millions of dollars every year to service debts, and that money is not going into the education systems and health systems. So why don't you use the celebrity status to put pressure on Western governments to actually cancel those debts? So it took Bonnie a little bit of time to you know, actually decide whether he wanted to be a part of that, because he, he'd been a musician for a long time, obviously being Irish, he has mm -hmm. a huge conscience. They were also colonized yes. um, uh, by Britain, <laughs> like us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was a bit of that connection and understanding in terms of how you lose uh, control in terms of policy, in terms of investments, in terms of where you take your money. So he got on board with that and he just got fired up. And so he was pressing a lot of governments that African countries were owing money, including Nigeria, mm -hmm. to cancel the debt. So out of that movement, there was a cancellation of about $100 billion at the time, mm -hmm. which was a great success. And with all the people that had been mobilized, he decided then to found an organization called One.org. And the objective of One.org is really to mobilize people who believe in the fact that poverty is man-made, and therefore, because it's man-made and it's not created mm. by God, mm. it can be eliminated by, by human action. So we campaign for policies and programs mm -hmm. to ex end extreme poverty and disease. And for a good eight years, most of this work was happening in, in Europe, in, in, in the United West, States. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was representing Africa. And so at some point, Bono had an aha moment to say, look, we can't carry on like this. We need to make sure that we connect with people on the African continent. We set up an office in the African continent. We have smart people in Africa who know better about what actually Africa needs. But also we work with pop culture in and Africa. pop culture is very powerful. And mm -hmm. pop culture is very powerful everywhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and, and as a result of that, we've partnered with lots of African celebrities and artists that have helped us to mobilize and bring, shine a light on some critical issues that are facing the they continent, whether it's food before insecurity we, or health. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. you. Before we talk about your, your development work, etc., mm -hmm. I just want to touch on something that you said while you were speaking. You had said that poverty is man-made. Yeah. Now there's this, you know, I think it's a misconception really mm -hmm. in Africa because mm -hmm. we, we tend to be very religious irrespective of what country we're from, mm -hmm. that if you're poor, it's because God made you that way. If you're wealthy, it's because God has given you the grace to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think and believe that way. So I, would, I just want you to touch on a little bit on why you think that poverty is man-made. Mm. So when you look at the countries that have actually advanced, right? they advance as a result of practical action, being consistent and having a goal in terms of where they are going and not relenting mm -hmm. on that. And I do not say that uh, God loves developed countries more than he loves so. the rest of Africa, but of course we've got a history where the way things have developed, uh, there was years of where Africa was taken advantage of and maybe we became less assertive in terms of what, uh, you know, fighting for what belongs to us. Yeah. So, and, and I think on the African side, uh, we, we have lots of resources we have lots of talented people, smart people. Put a smart person in, in, from Africa, in England, um, in, in a hospital, or maybe in, as an astronaut. They, yes. They'll thrive, right? Why do they thrive? It's because the environments have been created 
uh, to make sure that the they can apply their knowledge there. and that could benefit the society. So I think that's what we're lacking here, right? Let's pray to God. Uh, belief is important, but we need to be believe the right things, okay? God also says that actually we were made in his own image, right? And God's image is about greatness. God's image is about poverty. So if we're wallowing in poverty, there's something that wrong that we're doing. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. That's Thank you very much for clarifying. I, I mean, yeah, I'm definitely now a huge fan. And I know that you guys were doing great work, but I think sometimes, you know, you always have to say, why does it have to be the West that's coming into Africa yeah. to do this? But do you think that, you know, you guys have been able to make a difference in Africa? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, one is one of August still a young organization. Mm -hmm. And some concrete ways in, t in terms of the way in which we've made a difference is through the, uh, the, the, the mobilization, right, that has happened around raising money to improve access to AIDS and medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, Bono, sorry, again. sorry to cut you off there. Unfortunately, we're running out of time on this first segment. But if you can just hold that thought, okay. we'll come back to it. All right. The conversation okay. continues shortly. When it comes to Africa, we haven't made as much progress as Asian countries. Mm -hmm. And you cannot say again that God loves Asians more than he loves us. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. We are talking about poverty in a world of plenty. With us in the studio is Nachilala Nkombo. And before the break, she was answering certain questions about one.org and what they're doing in Africa and specifically in Nigeria. Now, Bolanle, you had asked the question before the break. Mm -hmm. Can you just repeat the yeah. question again? Sure. You know, I'm just curious to find out, you know, in terms of progress and the, and the impact that you guys have actually made in African countries, how has mm -hmm. it been for one.org? Okay. Fantastic, great question. And I think broadly, uh, one of the things that we do say is that over the last uh, 20 years, global poverty has halved, and that's in part because mm -hmm. of the campaigning that's been done to really encourage governments to make investments where they matter, mm -hmm. to help people actually come out of poverty and have better opportunity. But when it comes to Africa, we haven't made as much progress as Asian countries. Mm -hmm. And you cannot say again that God loves Asians more than he loves us. I think there's something that we need to do at the leadership level. There's something that we need to do also in terms of focusing. One specific program where you can actually measure impact on the African continent around the work of the One Campaign in Bono has been uh, the advocacy on increasing funding to the AIDS response. Um, as a result of the advocacy of One, uh, uh, Bono, through his influence, was able to um, influence uh, the, the White House uh, about 10 years ago, uh, over 10 years ago actually, uh, when President Bush was there, when he set up the presidential initiative for the AIDS response on Africa, not mm -hmm. globally. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, there was all more momentum that came up and Bono again was, has been involved in the creation of the Global Fund on AIDS, TB and Malaria. Mm -hmm. And you know, AIDS, TB and Malaria, the highest burden is here. And uh, through the work that's done, the billions of dollars have been raised and have actually enabled the increase in terms of access to AIDS medication from about 700,000 in the year 2000 mm. to 17 million today. So we have less people that are dying from HIV mm. as a result of advocacy that's been done by many other people, including uh, the leadership role that the one.org um, had. So I think, you know, on the basis of that model, and I've seen how actually politicians are also uh, start, start struck, right? Mm -hmm. When you're doing a campaign and advocacy, they'll say, oh yeah, when are you bringing Bono so and so. to come and talk to yeah. us? I remember in 2014, uh, here in Africa, our focus was on um, getting African governments to commit more money to invest in agriculture, mm -hmm. to deal with the issue of joblessness, to deal with the issue of food insecurity. In Africa, we spend about 50 billion dollars every year to import food. Hmm. It, doesn't, it, it doesn't mean we don't have money because we buy the food exactly. from outside. It's exactly. an issue of organization. Mm -hmm. It's an issue of leadership. So we actually brought together 19 African artists from 10 different African countries mm -hmm. that spoke 11 languages to come up with a song that was called Coconut Cho yeah. Co Chocolate. I remember that And so Dibanj well. was in the lead of that.
Kuti, yeah. we had Judith Sipoma, we had Diamond from Tanzania. And it was Tanzania. produced by Covams? And yeah, it was yeah. produced by mm. Covams. Mm. So the idea was to sort of uh, uh, change the narrative on agriculture. So you had to get young people to see that there's opportunity in agriculture mm -hmm. and to also to get the government to see the opportunity in agriculture. And as a result of that campaign, I think we succeeded in convincing a lot of African governments to refocus on that, including the government in Nigeria at the time. I'm now curious because I know that you're from Zambia mm -hmm. and you live in you know, South Africa. Right. In terms of strategies that you've applied in different parts right. of Africa, mm -hmm. how have they worked for you specifically here in West Africa and in Nigeria? Do you find that each country you know, everything has to be shifted and changed to make sure that it actually works in the country that you're trying to change? So normally what we do um, is that our point of departure is to look at certain commitments governments have made already to invest 10% of their money, uh, their budgets into the agriculture sector, mm -hmm. right? So right now we're working on a campaign right here in Nigeria mm -hmm. that's based on a law that was uh, enacted in Nigeria in 2014, in 2014 actually. And uh, the objective of that law was for the government to uh, improve primary health care, mm -hmm. to make sure that every Nigerian has access to health services and every Nigerian has health coverage. Mm -hmm. And we know when we started working on that particular issue, even though it's a priority and an important thing for, for, for one, there's many organizations, Nigerian organizations, mm -hmm. that had been pushing for that. Mm -hmm. So our role has been to amplify that, to bring more voices to the table, bring people like Waje to help mm -hmm. us mobilize more people to sign the petition so that we can get the government's attention. Um, you know, globally, I think we, all, we have a challenge in terms of responding to health issues, right, yes. mm -hmm. that aggregate over time. And uh, when you look at the, 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 the national here in Nigeria and even the global response to you know, the abduction of the Chibo girls, it was massive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Over 200 girls, yes. Yes. right, yes. were abducted. Yes. Yes. And I think everyone did the right thing, but... It took, to, a, it took a lot longer than it took it should a lot longer to bring it them took, back home. Exactly. It, I think the first two weeks there was silence and it was after two weeks yes. that there was a, exactly. that there was a noise. That in there is a problem. But mm -hmm. do you know that in Nigeria, 750,000 children below the age of five die every year. That, that's busloads and busloads of it children. Is, it is. I think we should be outraged and we should ask the government to do something about it. So our small contribution as a one campaign and a range of our civil society partners, including artists, mm. has been to ask the government to move health above the government priorities, mm -hmm. right? We know that, uh, for example, 150 women die every day due to childbirth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why should that be the case, you know? And, so and essentially get, get the government to do something, to Get the government that to respond to the crisis because they, it's not, not just, normal death. Not just talk about it, but Not do just talk about, about it. it. We know that the, country, the government is strained with resources, there's problem in the north, Boko mm. Haram, and so on. But the people even in the Boko Haram areas need help, right? The people who are driving the rest of the economy to respond to the north need help. I think so, it's, I think it's, you know, we've actually fantastic. run out of Unfortunately, time. Unfortunately, yes, yeah. we have run out of time. Yeah. Um, okay, but so I guess what, the only thing to I can say mm -hmm. to, to your viewers really at this point is that please join our campaign. It's called Make Niger Stronger because we believe people's health is people's wealth. Very yeah. true. Right? If I was not healthy, I would not have the opportunity to speak to my wonderful sisters yeah. here. Yeah. But thank God because I've got the health that I'm here. So please go to our website at www.one.org slash Africa and sign our petition to make Niger stronger. We need to bring our voices together so that we can be heard by the federal government. Definitely. Thank you and so Wajit told us all about Thank it. You she so really much. did. She yeah. told oh, us good. all about Talk it. Good. Thank you so much. It was wonderful meeting you. It was and wonderful meeting you. you and thanks for the opportunity to chat and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.